Lesson 11, Setting the Properties of a Window. To follow along with this lesson, you will need the project from Win32 Lesson 1. Here we give a brief overview of the parts of the program that are used to set and change the properties of a window. We will go quickly, so don't worry if you don't understand it all now. We will focus on the parts that we want to use later as they come up. At the top of the file, we have these three global variables. The first is a handle to the instance of the current module. The second is a string that holds the text that will go in the window's title bar. And the third variable is a string that holds the name of our window class. Below this, we have a few function declarations. My register class is used to define our window class type and in it instance performs some initialization as well as creating our actual window. The third function, windproc, defines our callback for handling events in the window. Looking at our myRegisterClass function, we have the variable type windClassX, which is used to define our window class type. We will go into all of these members in depth eventually, but for now we will simply tell what they are. The first member of our window class type simply holds the size of the variable type. This is the size in bytes of the type windClassX. The second member defines the style of the window class type. It is composed of two styles that are joined by a bitwise OR and make the window redraw when either the horizontal or vertical size is changed. There are several more styles which can also be added by bitwise OR, but these will be covered later. The third parameter sets the callback function for responding to events. As we have seen before, this function is set to be our windproc function. We will ignore the next two parameters, but the one after them is a handle to the instance of the module. After this, we have the icon, which looks like a little window. This icon is used to define the image that appears next to the .exe file for this application. The next member is the cursor. This determines what the cursor will look like when it enters the window's client area. In this case, we load the arrow cursor, which is commonly used. We can change this to another value like this. The background member is the color that is painted in the client area. We can change this color by creating a brush or by using one of the other preset color values like this. Next, we have the menu, which is set to the default menu that the project creates. After this, we have the name of the window class, which is set internally. Lastly, we have the small icon. This icon is exactly the same as the previous icon, so it is difficult to tell which one is used where, but this one is used for the upper left hand corner of the window and in the taskbar. At the end, we register the class so that we can create windows of this type. In the init instance function below this, we create the window with a call to the function create window. The parameters that this function takes primarily change the appearance of the window. The first parameter defines what window class type this function is creating. The next parameter is a string that holds the text that goes in the title bar. After this, we have the style of the window. For example, this value can be used to select things like whether the window has a menu bar or is resizable. The next two parameters set the x and y coordinates of the upper left hand corner. In this case, the coordinates are set to the default values. This is accomplished by setting the x-coordinate to this constant value and the y-coordinate to zero. The next two parameters are the width and height of the window. Like the upper left corner, these values are simply set to the default values. The last four parameters are a handle to the parent window, a handle to the menu if we want one that is different than the one that is defined by the class, a handle to the instance of the module, and a pointer to a create struct. This concludes the lesson.